What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Kia Sorento X-Line SX Prestige. Huge thank you to Daniel Castro over at Safford Kia of Fredericksburg, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Sorento or any Kia product, then I'll be sure to have Daniel's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first, I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Kia Sorento X-Line SX Prestige, and this particular one has been painted in gravity gray. I wanted to preface this video by saying for 2024, Kia refreshed the Sorento inside and out with updated front and rear fascias as well as updated interior technology. But this one being the X-Line SX Prestige, as standard you get LED headlights with high beam assist as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights. But taking a step to the left, this is what the front end of the updated Sorento looks like. So you can see you have your Kia logo located at the center of your hood. And this one being the X-Line SX Prestige, you get the gloss black front grille with the gray grille surround. That's kind of like a U-shaped around the grille. The observant viewer may be able to note that you get a forward facing camera at the center of your grill. And that is because this comes standard with a 360 degree view camera system. Also as standard up here at the front end, you get six forward facing sensors. And then coming down just a little bit, you get a satin black lower grill with gloss black and gray accenting. So this is the gloss black accenting. This is the satin black lower grill. And this is the gray accenting. That's the U shaped same as what you get here at your upper grill and then on the outsides of your front bumper you get the satin black outer grills both there and there here is a front three quarter shot of this thing and i also wanted to mention that you get 8.2 inches of ground clearance here with this trim level but coming on down the side you get the satin black wheel arch moldings you also get torque vectoring all wheel drive and a center locking differential these are the standard and only wheels you can get with this trim level and they are 20 inch gloss black wheels wrapped in 255 45 continental cross contact LX sport all season tires. I'll give you a view of the tread pattern on these tires as best that I can there real quick. That is what they look like. And then working my way up as standard, you do get rain sensing wipers. And then you also get this gloss slash satin black trim. So this is the gloss black trim here on your fender that goes into both of your front doors and then the satin black is there on the bottom speaking of gloss black you get gloss black mirror caps with integrated turn signals and as standard these side view mirrors are heated power folding you get memory settings so not only is the vehicle going to memorize your driver seat settings it is also going to memorize your side view mirror settings and you get two of those memory seat adjustment settings or also memory mirror adjustment settings and then you will find your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then all the way down at the bottom of both of your side view mirrors you have a camera and that camera works with your blind spot view system as well as your 360 degree view camera system which is very helpful when parking in tight parking situations here's a little side profile shot of this thing this thing kind of reminds me of like an Acura MDX here in this area right here if you agree with me let me know down below but at the top of your roof line you get the gloss black roof rails and then coming down just a little bit you get the gloss black window trim you also get body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind though the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles the rear two door handles do not get that keyless access function and then coming down just a little bit more you get the satin black door cladding found at the bottom of all of your passenger doors so you get the satin black wheel arch moldings that lead into your satin black door cladding that lead into your satin black wheel arch moldings here at the rear. And then just above the wheel arch moldings here at the rear, you will find your fuel door on the driver's side. You do not get a capitalist filler neck. However, 87 octane will do you just fine with this thing. 
and then closing that back up coming up to here you get your body color shark fin antenna as well as your body color roof spoiler with your integrated third brake light now with the x-line sx prestige you do get the digital rear view mirror and this is the digital rear view mirrors camera which i'll show you on the interior right? i can show you a little view of what that looks like right now and then you also do get a rear window defroster and your rear wiper hides up in there now i'm going to give you a rear three quarter shot of this thing that is what she looks like here at the back end and you do get led tail lights as standard and taking a step to the right, here's a little beauty shot of the new updated Sorento. So they updated it back here as well. You get silver badging here on your lift gate with the Sorento badging, the Kia badging, and the X-Line badging. Now at the center of your Kia badging, just underneath the eye is where you will find your backup camera. And as standard with this thing, you get a smart power lift gate with height adjustment so if you put your hand underneath here you'll feel a little pad if the vehicle is unlocked or if you have your key fob in your pocket it will open up and that is the speed in which it opens up now i'm going to show you what the uh, protocol is to set the height adjustment there on screen now and then over here if you click that button that is going to turn the smart lift gate off basically what the smart lift gate does is when you walk up to the rear area the lift gate will open up and then when you walk away from the rear area the lift gate will close on its own so it opens on its own and it closes on its own and if you do not like that you can turn it off with that button there on the right but this is the trunk area so with the third row seats up you probably get about 16 inches of storage space so not quite that much but you can see with the third row seats down you get an additional about three feet of storage space so you can see here's a perfect visualization with the seats up about 16 inches with the seats down you get an additional about three feet and then on this side this is the only option this vehicle has and these are the 225 dollar carpeted floor mats again only option this vehicle has and then if you wanted to fold this seat down all you would have to do is pull on that push forward and the seats will drop if you wanted to raise them back up you just pull on this thing right here and they raise right back up as easy as that but if you wanted to drop the second row seats you would come here to the passenger side of the trunk and let's say we wanted to drop this seat you can see where it says r meaning right you click on that and then that seat will fold flat for some additional storage space and then if you lift up on this piece here you get some storage space you get a deep storage cubby on that side that's probably about eight inches deep but otherwise it's about you know two two and a half inches of deep here so you could set your jumper cables right here if you wanted to or you could set your jumper cables over there if you wanted to and here's a closer view of that down in there and then on the right side you have your jack and really that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area if i click this button the lift gate will begin to close back up and we're going to finish things off here at the back end so at the bottom you get a satin black rear bumper with six integrated parking sensors you also get a gray valence and this is the gray valence here you also get your reverse lights and some reflectors on the outsides of that gray valence and last but not least you get a max tow capacity of 3500 pounds i just did a video with the kia telluride i can't remember which trim level it is off the top of my head right now but the telluride the one that I did a video with has a max tow capacity of 5,000 pounds. So a 3,500 pound max tow capacity to put that into perspective, you can pull two jet skis, you could pull a, an ATV or two, you could pull a utility trailer full of mulch, stuff like that. You know, not the least capable, not the most capable. By the way, this area right here with the daytime running lights really reminds me of the newly refreshed Cadillac XT4. If you see that, let me know in the comments down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the two and a half liter turbo four cylinder that makes 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. It's mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission for a zero to 60 time in six seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 20 miles per gallon in the city, 27 miles per gallon on the highway for 23 miles per gallon combined with all wheel drive. I just got out of doing a video with a new Telluride. That one has the 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6. This thing makes very close horsepower to that. However, this makes gobs more torque than the Telluride's V6. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. 
please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. Those things look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it if you run your finger across this rectangle here and it will lock back up. This is what the key fob looks like. It's mostly gray, but going over the functions on the key fob, starting from this one here, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your power lift gate function, your panic function, and on the opposite side, you have your remote start function. If you wanted to remote start this, all you have to do is lock it first, press and hold on the remote start function, and it will fire up. And that is what it sounds like being fired up from the exterior's perspective. Now, let's see what the interior has to offer. So, this one's been specced with the black leather upholstery. However, they do have an optional sage green or olive brown interior, but those come at a premium. This is what the door panel looks like. So at the top, you get some vinyl wrapping, you get some wood looking trim, two memory seat adjustment settings. This button right here is going to power fold in or out your side view mirrors. Here are your side view mirror controls. You have your unlock and your lock functions, automatic up and down windows at all four corners. Pressing on this button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges and it is also a child lock for your second row passengers. So basically, if you turn that on, the people in the second row are not gonna be able to get out from the interior door handles. And then all of this area right here is black leather wrapped and you get a nicely padded armrest. And then coming to the bottom of the door panel, you get a spot right there. You could set a Deer Park water bottle and then you get some miscellaneous storage space. And by the way, this trim level comes standard with a 12 speaker Bose sound system that sounds very good in my personal opinion. Coming in just a little bit more, you get the brushed aluminum Sorrento door sill. And these again are what your front seats look like. And as standard with the X-Line SX Prestige, you get a 14 way power driver seat with four way power lumbar and a thigh extension. And then the passenger gets a 10 way power passenger seat with two way lumbar. And by the way, both front seats are heated and ventilated. But stepping into the interior, let's hear what this thing sounds like when you close the door. And now we have full access into the interior. So you may see what is new to the Sorento for the 2024 model year, but I'm gonna get into this stuff here in a second because I would wanna start with the controls that we have over here. So first things first, you get an HVAC vent and then beneath that, these buttons are to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. If you press and hold on that, that is going to pop open and or close your power lift gate. This is to turn your traction control system on or off. And then if you come to here and you flip that down, that gives you access into your manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, meaning you can bring the steering wheel towards you, you can push the steering wheel away from you, and the steering wheel will also move up and down. And then once you find your comfortable position, all you gotta do is lock it back into place. Now, let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And then that is your blind spot view system there. So not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight control stock and your fog light control stock. So if I flip that all the way down, that is headlights off. It also lets you know what it is doing over there as well. Then that is headlights automatic. That is daytime running lights on and all the way up is headlights in the always on position. And then that is to turn your fog lights on that is to turn your fog lights off. Personally, for me, I like to leave it in the automatic position. But what I wanna do is I wanna give you a point of view of what this thing sounds like when you start it up from the interior's perspective. So now I'm gonna open up that door, I'm gonna close the door, and I'm gonna fire it up, and let's hear it. So that is what it sounds like being fired up from the interior's perspective. And then zooming back out, this is what your steering wheel looks like. It is a leather wrapped steering wheel and it is also heated. You also get your steering wheel mounted paddle shifters on the back side of the steering wheel. Downshift on the left, upshift on the right. These are not metal, that they are plastic. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like on the new Sorento. Now, going throughout the controls on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, this is to speak to the vehicle. 
pushing up is going to volume up pushing down is going to volume down and if you click on that function that is going to mute the audio system and then one thing that's kind of interesting about kia and hyundai products is that if you push up on this that is going to bring you backwards on a track if you push down on that that is going to bring you forwards on a track if you're on your bluetooth audio and then this right here is going to pop up your phone stuff here on the infotainment system and then if you come back over to here you can see the mode button and the star button both of these buttons here are configurable so if you click on the mode button it's going to pop this up on your infotainment system and basically you see all of these different functions here you can select all of these here on the mode button and every time you click the mode button it will basically cycle through all of these functions starting with the bluetooth then amazon music phone projection sounds of nature it's going to bounce between all of those different things however you could select all of these you could select you know four of these or you could select one of them it doesn't really matter how many you select um, or if you select any of them but just know that you can do any of these different things displayed on the screen with that mode button there and you can do all of them if you wanted to however this is a similar premise however when you click the star it brings you into a different menu of options to choose from and you can only choose one of these options for the star function so it could be your driver assistant settings that it brings up quiet mode media on off cancel route reroute any of these things uh, it will pop up with the star button however you can only choose one of these so just um, keep that in mind you know with the mode button you can choose all of them or three of them or as many as you want the mode button or uh, this star button you can only choose one of them I'm gonna leave it on none for now uh, and then coming to this side of the steering wheel see those pages button and then this right here both of these are to control your digital gauge cluster which i'll get into here in a second but then all of these other functions uh kind of like that l shape thing are basically for your smart cruise control so you get navigation based smart cruise control with stop and go as well as the highway driving assist 2 which is basically a semi-autonomous driving system. So that is what these functions are for. And as mentioned on the exterior, you get rain sensing wipers. So if you set the um, stock to automatic, the wipers will adjust dependent their speed dependent on the intensity of the rain. But now moving into our gauge cluster, this is what the gauge cluster looks like. You can see down here, it lets me know that my parking brake is engaged. That is my fuel range, that is my fuel gauge. That is the ambient exterior temperature, the transmission status stuff, coolant temperature, odometer, tachometer, speedometer, speed limit sign, driver assistant stuff at the center. And if I click this right here, it's gonna bring me into this screen. So it's right now it's in since last reset. If I click down one, it's gonna bring me into my auto stop start stuff, my tire pressure stuff, power distribution. So this is basically like if I floored the vehicle, all of these boxes would get filled in. However, uh, let's say I'm, you know, just doing a regular acceleration at about 20 miles an hour. That's where the front wheels will take over and the back wheels won't be powering the vehicle forward. Coming down a little bit more, you get your current trip information, since refueling information, and that's about it for that page. You click that one more time, then you have your compass, and then it brings you back into this screen. However, you press and hold OK right here. That's going to pop up your driver assistance stuff on the infotainment system. Um, and really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here on our digital gauge cluster. So we might as well move into our infotainment system. So again, all of this is new for the 2024 Sorento. So these are your dual 12.3 inch screens. So this is a 12.3 inch dash. This is your 12.3 inch infotainment system with built in navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. So this is what the screen looks like. I'm gonna show you the home screen. So this is the home screen. You get your nav stuff, media stuff, phone stuff, Apple CarPlay stuff, all of these different things on this screen. Now if I swipe over here into our secondary menu, you get your maintenance stuff, HD radio stuff, online manual. Um, so basically, yeah, we can go into our setup here and you can go in between all of these different things here. But let's say you wanted to make it easy and all you wanted to do was go into your driver assistant stuff and you didn't feel like going throughout any sort of menu to menu to menu. Well, all you would have to do would be click that magnifying glass here and I'm gonna type in driver assistance and it's gonna pop up my driver assistance stuff over here. And basically, oh man, I messed up. You click right here. Uh, and it will basically bring you into your driver assistance features, right? So you can see all of your different driver assistance features here. So that is what that does. The magnifying glass makes it very, very easy to do that kind of stuff. Swipe down, that's gonna bring you into your notification screen. 
shows you all of these different things here. You can turn on passenger talk. Passenger talk is basically like a um, system. You can hear my voice is kind of echoed. It's basically so the third row passengers, if you're on a road trip and they can't hear you, that is like they absolutely can hear you because your voice is now being projected throughout the speakers there in the rear. And now when I click that, you can see the um, what the uh, echo has gone away. Then you can also adjust the brightness of the uh, gauge cluster and stuff here, as well as down there. So that is about that. And then you can click display off and the display will turn off. And that's kind of about it for that system. Very easy to use. I don't feel like I need to spend too much time on the screen. And then coming down just a little bit, you get your push button, start button over there, two HVAC vents, your hazard button that actually flashes with the hazards. And then this is interesting because this is very similar to what you get in the new Kia Sportage. So I did a video with a Kia Sportage a few months ago. So you can see right now, this is my temperature control knob. This is my temperature control knob. And all of this stuff is for my climate control system. System. Well, you're like, well, where's the volume control knob? So you can see the nav looking thing or like that thing right there. And then the fan, basically, if you flip up now, you can see this has totally changed. So now this is my volume control knob. This is my tuning control knob. You still have those climate things right there, but then you have all of these shortcuts to go into home, map, search. Uh, so basically this is gonna pop up the magnifying glass screen. And then that's gonna bring me into my home screen. Basically, these are all of your different shortcut buttons to go back on a track, forward on a track. It's gonna pop up your media stuff. This is gonna bring you into your settings screen. And then you can see this star right here is not filled in. So if I click on that star, it's basically the same premise behind this star, but this star is filled in. This star is not filled in. So that star can be any of these things here. So it could be bring you into your driver assistant setting, bring you into any of these things here on the screen, but you can only choose one of them. So same premise behind that button over there. Anyways, coming down here just a little bit more. As mentioned, when we first stepped into the vehicle, you get heated and ventilated front seats with three levels of adjustability for both. So if you push forward, that's your heated seat function. If you push down, that's your ventilated seat function. Three levels of adjustability. Same stuff over here on the passenger side. And then down in here, you get a wireless charging pad. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max, and it is charging and it fits no problem in the wireless charging pad. And then you also get two USB-C ports down in there and a little bit of storage space right here. Now, coming back out just a little bit more, you have your gear shifter here. So if you pull back and you go into drive and you wanna control the transmission with your steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, Flip this over to the left, and now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, or you can push up to upshift and pull down to downshift. So two different ways you can do that. Then you get two cup holders right here. Here is your drive mode selector. Right now we are in normal mode. If I twist to the right, it's gonna put me into my snow mode, then my smart mode, sport mode, and eco mode. And as mentioned on the exterior, I said we have a center locking diff. So if I click on that, that is going to turn the center locking diff on the center locking diff is basically a system in which it sends equal power to all four wheels if you're stuck in like a ditch or something basically all four wheels are going to be spinning at the same speed to try to get you out of that sticky situation uh, and then as mentioned you also get a heated steering wheel but you get two levels of adjustability with your heated steering wheel your auto hold function is if you're stuck in traffic or whenever you want to use it really, but I always use this example. If you're stuck in traffic and you're tired of holding your foot down on your brake by yourself, you turn the auto hold function, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. And if you wanted to release and go forward again, all you would have to do is hit the accelerator and it will move forward again. Then this is your hill descent control button. Um, you know, Kia calls it the downhill brake control, but it is your hill descent control button. And then this is your electronic parking brake. If you wanted to engage the parking brake, you pull up on that. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, you'd push your foot down on the brake, push against that, and the parking brake will disengage. By the way, this is what your pedals look like. You get the aluminum sport pedals with the floor-mounted accelerator. They look very cool. Um, and then these three final buttons, that is to turn the auto stop start system on or off. This is gonna turn your parking sensors on or off. So if you get too close to an object, the vehicle will kind of like beep at you. This is gonna turn those beeps off. And then clicking on the camera looking button is gonna pop up your 360 degree view camera system. One other cool view you could do is click on this and then that's gonna pop up the Sorento and basically you can navigate around like that. I wish they would match it to the actual color of this vehicle, but they don't. Uh, as mentioned, two cup holders right here is a perfect spot. You could set your key fob. Then you also get a spot down to here. You could set your key fob, your phone or something like that. 
you get a leather wrapped armrest and opening this up you get a divider but there is no connectivity down in the center console down in there so that's about it for that i would say you probably get you know probably 10 inches of depth and probably about a foot uh going this way so closing that back up you get a lockable lower glove box you can fit what you need to down in there and then this is what this side looks like this is what the redesigned dash looks like and then with the x line sx prestige you get a digital rear view mirror as mentioned so this is what the digital rear view mirror looks like with your home link on the bottom you have three different garage bays you can open up individually now if you do not like the uh digital rear view mirror but you do like the spec on this vehicle you can flip this forward and now this is just going to behave like an auto dimming rear view mirror would I like the digital rear view mirror personally because it rids you of your blind spots. At least that's what I found it to do. And then if you click right here, you can adjust the brightness or the dimness. And if you click that, you can adjust it down, you can adjust it up, and that's basically all the adjustability you get with that. I like to leave it about like right there. Uh, and that's kind of about it for the digital rear view mirror. Up top here, you got your different roadside assistance stuff. If you click on that, that is basically your instant dome light on button. It turns on all the interior dome lights. And then you see this right here. If that illuminates in amber, basically when you open up the doors, the interior lights will not turn on. Um, and then that's where it lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. Basically just touch these lights. They're like touchscreen LED reading lights. And then this vehicle comes standard with a panoramic roof. So that is what the panoramic roof looks like. The sunroof not only tilts, but the sunroof also does slide backwards as well. And we're gonna see how far the sunroof goes back. So, stops there. If I hit it one more time, nope, that's as far as it will go back. Um, that's about it. Panoramic roof, nice and huge, really. Um, and then, one thing I also wanted to mention is that this vehicle does get a Syntex suede headliner. And it not only looks really good, but it also feels super soft as well. Opening this up, you get a vanity mirror and a vanity light. You turn the vanity light on by yourself. And let's say you leave it on and you close the vanity mirror. Well, it's going to turn off. No problem. And then you open this thing up. You can slide this forwards and backwards depending on where the sun is shining. And then the driver gets a no poop handle. The front passenger also gets a no poop handle. And then going over the seat comfort, I think these seats are very comfortable. Um, I just got out of a Telluride. Uh, and I would say that these seats are more comfortable than the Telluride. And if I was, you know, a family maybe with two kids and I was in between the Telluride and the new Sorento, I'd probably go with the Sorento. I like the way it looks better. I like how it's a little bit smaller, not as like top heavy. Um, I don't know, it just feels more comfortable to me. You may feel differently, but um, now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. You can take a look at everything that you get as standard. Um, a couple options are the only option this vehicle has, which is the carpeted floor mats, but I am just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Sorento X-Line SX Prestige is spec'd is $47,990. So I just did a video with a Telluride. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but it was one of the higher trim levels. It wasn't the highest trim level. Um, and comparing that, I'll put it on screen, which one I just did a video with, but comparing that one to this one, I will say that I think I prefer this. This is cheaper by about four grand and you get a little bit more with it. And I kind of like the look of it better, but I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. So back here, you get the second row sun shades. You can pull that up basically your peasant blockers um, and then all of this leather wrapped nicely padded armrest as mentioned you get automatic up and down windows back here and the window goes all the way down by the way you also get heated outboard second row seats with two levels of adjustability you also get a cup holder and a little bit of miscellaneous storage space down there followed by your bose speaker you get another brushed aluminum sorrento door sill back here and then these are what these rear seats look like Stepping on into these rear seats, if I pull this down, this is an adjustable armrest. So you can lock it into whatever position you want to lock it into. And if I close that door, there's also a lever right here. And if I pull up on that lever, I can recline the second row seats. So very nice level of reclinability. And when it comes to leg and knee room, I've got an absolute ton of it. And then you get an no poop handle, a dome light that is LED, and a spot you could set your dry cleaning. You also get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat that is just a seat back pocket and then a mesh seat back pocket. You get the same stuff on that side. 
Right here, you get a USB-C port. You get another USB-C port there. Two HVAC vents. And down here, you get a 115-volt household power outlet followed by a 12-volt power outlet to the left of that. Now, seat comfort back here in the second row, very, very comfortable. I love the adjustable armrest. I was just in a $120,000 Cadillac Escalade the other day, and that one didn't even have the adjustable armrest, so I think that's a mistake on Cadillac's part, good on Kia's part, and plenty of knee and leg room here in the second row. And then, this is what the third row looks like. You get a cup holder, a USB-C port, a little bit of storage space. On this side, you get the cup holder, the USB-C port, a 12-volt power outlet, and some storage space. So that is what the storage space looks like down in there. And really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the third row. I will say, comparing the Telluride to this, the Telluride has more room in the third row, obviously. But, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I want to see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. This thing's got quite a bit of get up to it, especially down low. It's got some nice low end torque. Um, so this thing rides very nice. And I think I do like the way that this thing drives better. I think I like the seating position in this better than um, the Telluride. And the reason being is the Telluride just rode a little high for me. Uh, I kind of like stuff that sits a little bit lower so then you got more like maneuverability when it comes to like that and you just feel like you're more in control with less top heaviness. And I'm not saying the Telluride was top heavy by any means. I just, I like the way that this feels better, drives better and I think I like the interior of this a little bit better as well. Even though they're very similar, I just don't, I'm not somebody who has a big family anyway, but if I had a bigger family, I would probably choose the Telluride. If I have a family of two kids, I would probably choose the Sorento. So there's that. But I really like the way that this one drives. Um, you know, it's comfortable. One thing I really don't like though, is the system in which the lane keeping system. I do not like the lane keeping system at all. Um, you know, it really just, throws you around too much and I, I don't like that personally for me I don't like any sort of lane keeping system I find them very annoying and almost unsafe because sometimes they're fighting you and then they just like you know jolt the steering wheel like that it's like well this is ridiculous how is this supposed to be safer than if I didn't have the lane keeping system um, so I am not a fan of the lane keeping systems at all um, so sorry I had to get that little rant out of the way, but I really do like the way that this thing drives. I like the way that it looks and the seats are very, very comfortable in this. I've got a very nice amount of like cushion, but then there's also a little bit of firmness to it as well. So it's not like you don't have any lumbar support or anything like that. So I think Kia did a great job here with the seats on the Sorento in my opinion. Um, and then also talking about the Bose sound system, the Bose sound system sounds really, really good in this. Uh, and here's a little acceleration. That was your blind spot view system there. And, um, you know, it's a good good family SUV. It kind of reminds me of the Acura MDX a little bit. And I think it's just a very, it's got a very sleek design on the exterior. I like the new updated headlights at the front. They really remind me, like, especially with like the daytime running light with the amber, they remind me of the Cadillac XT4 and the Cadillac XT4 just got a refresh also in 2024. Uh, it's just got a really sharp design to it, which I like. So um, I don't think we're gonna be able to go too fast here today just because it's about rush hour time. It's actually 445, but here's a Florida. It's pretty quick. Like when you get into the proper RPM range in the power band, I'll show you that here again. Basically just gonna gun it. It kicks you in your butt. Like you can feel the torque. This thing definitely feels quicker than the Telluride, which is funny to say because the Telluride costs more. I guess the Telluride is bigger and et cetera. There's a Telluride right there. Uh, this thing's definitely quicker on the low end for sure. Actually all throughout the range, uh, it's definitely quicker than the Telluride for sure. So. It's comfortable, 
it's quick. The sound system is great. I really, really like the way that the X-Line looks with the gloss black accents and everything. And then the SX Prestige gives you all the niceties here on the interior. Excuse me. Like the um, heated and ventilated front seats. That is a big thing. You know, sometimes in the summertime, I'm going to actually test the ventilated seats right now and try to give you uh, a real world test because I feel like kind of hot right now. Um, so we're going to see how loud the ventilated seats are. And then, okay, immediately right off the bat, I can feel the ventilated seats working and getting through my sweatshirt. And I got long johns on and pants on and I can feel it going through. So the ventilated seats are good and they're not too loud. Take a listen. I don't remember what I was in the other day, but uh, I was in something. What did I do videos with yesterday? It was either a Mazda or the Cadillac, and the ventilated seats were just loud. Once this light turns green, which it just did, I'm going to give you a nice little regular acceleration. And then also lead vehicle driving away. That's a nice feature there. Lord. This thing has like no joke power. Like it is seriously, seriously powerful. Um, so that's another reason I would like this thing. You know, there's the old Sorento right there. The new Sorento uh, looks better. But the power, man, the power behind this thing and the power to get you up and going is impressive. You know, it's uh, it's got really great power to it. The ride is also good. I feel like the ride in this uh, is a little bit more plush than the Telluride. Um, that's just another thing that I've noticed. So overall, I kind of like the feeling of this better. I like the size of this better. Um, the seats, I think, are also better in this as compared to the Telluride I did a video with. That Telluride I just did a video with, I believe, had a 10-way power driver seat. This has a 14-way power driver seat, and that's the guy that came up to me uh, a little bit earlier in the day. So anyways, you know, this thing's comfortable, it's efficient, and it's affordable. You know, I know $47,000 is definitely a lot of money, but at the same time, nowadays with cars being so expensive, it actually is a pretty good value because it looks good. It feels good here on the interior with all the different touch points and stuff. And it also gives you pretty much all the driving features you could ever really want on a vehicle. You know what I'm saying? So. That's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it if you do that. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.